Hello, and welcome to the first lesson in our series on organic chemistry. We'll concentrate on matric organic chemistry, but we'll also revise some of the important concepts you already know. What comes to mind when you hear the term organic? Do you imagine vegetables and fruit, plants, human bodies, animals, coal, wood? What about things like paint, plastic, the fuel in our buses and cars, perfume, paper, bread, and other foodstuffs like pasta, cheese, vinegar, margarine, and sugar? Yes, you'd be right. All these things and many more are organic compounds. This pen, my clothes, this desk, and virtually all the things on it. Remember that organic chemistry is the study of molecules containing carbon. An organic compound is one that contains carbon. The richest source of organic molecules is living things. A good example is DNA, a molecule inside your cells that uses the special bonding patterns of carbon and other atoms to store the information used to make up your body. In this way, carbon can store the building plan to make your hair dark or your toes short. All life as we know it would be impossible without carbon. In the past, the word organic referred to something from a living thing. Now we know that many manufactured substances are also organic. So all these things have some common characteristics. They all contain carbon and make use of the special bonding properties of carbon atoms. In this series of lessons about organic molecules, we'll look at how carbon makes chemical bonds, making it capable of forming so many different molecules. We'll see how carbon and hydrogen form the backbone of larger molecules and how the size and shape of the molecules can affect physical properties, like boiling and melting points. First of all, before we take a look at how carbon atoms bond, let's see why we are so interested in carbon. We find carbon in the middle of the second period on the periodic table. It is in group four, and this means that carbon has four valence electrons. This also means that for carbon to have a complete set of eight electrons, it must make four electron pairs or bonds. These bonds are with other atoms or even other carbon atoms. This is the reason why organic molecules bond and behave the way they do. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to recognize the structural, molecular and condensed structural formulae of some organic molecules. Draw and name simple alkanes and identify and interpret the physical properties of alkanes. Let's look at the characteristics of organic molecules first. You already know that each carbon atom can form four bonds. Carbon can bond with itself to form long chains and rings. Carbon can also make double or triple bonds with itself and it can form ring shapes. Many lengths and shapes of carbon chains can be formed because of these characteristics of carbon. Imagine just how many types of organic molecules can be formed. Now, I'd like to show you some of the ways in which organic chemists show the structure of organic molecules. It's logical and easy. Just follow me each step of the way. To start with, when we draw the structure of a compound containing carbon, we must ensure that every carbon atom has four bonds to it. Here, for example, is methane, which consists of one carbon atom. Four bonds, all bonded to a hydrogen atom. Ethane works in the same way. Here are two carbon atoms 
each with four bonds and hydrogen atoms. In propane, we see that the three carbon atoms each have their usual four bonds and hydrogen atoms. When we draw the molecules in this way, we show their structure with the position of the atoms and the bonds. We call these two-dimensional drawings structural formulae. We can also write the chemical formula of organic molecules in the same way as other formulae, starting with carbon. We call this the molecular formula. It only lists the number of each type of atom, but does not tell us how they are arranged inside the molecule. The molecular formula for methane is therefore CH4. The molecular formula for ethane is C2H6. And that of propane is C3H8. So, to recap, this is the structural formula of ethane, while this is its molecular formula. Okay. Now that we know that carbon makes four bonds, it is easier to understand why carbon is present in more than 10 million different compounds. One of the things that makes carbon so special is that it forms bonds to itself to make chains. Notice how each of the carbon atoms still has four bonds to other atoms. Some of those bonds are between two carbon atoms. Now, we can always put the molecule together differently to make a new molecule with a different name and different properties. We call these groups of molecules isomers. Isomers are molecules that have the same molecular formula but different structural formula. This is very similar to building with bricks. Like carbon, the bricks and cement can be used in a different way to make different structures. A wall can be built in many different ways, using the same bricks and cement by simply combining them in different shapes. In the same way, isomers are different compounds built from exactly the same atoms. It can be tiring drawing in all the bonds and hydrogen atoms on carbon structures. Organic chemists sometimes use a different way of representing organic molecules without showing all the bonds. This type of representation is called a condensed structural formula. It still shows the number of each type of atom while keeping the order in which they are bonded. Let's look at the example and see how a two-dimensional structure can be written as a condensed structural formula. We start at one end, first writing the C symbol for the first carbon atom. Next, we write down the hydrogen atoms that are joined to it. The second C has an H attached as well as two CH3 groups. This means that one of the CH3 groups forms a branch or side chain of the main chain. If there is a branch or side chain, we place the symbols inside brackets in the condensed formula. So this is the condensed structural formula of 2-ethyl propane. See if you can write the condensed structural formula for these two molecules, ethene and propyne something a bit different for you. The condensed molecular formula for ethene is CH2CH2, and for propyne it is CH3CCH. Can you see that we will always know that there are double or triple bonds because of the smaller number of hydrogen atoms on each carbon? We can now see how to draw organic molecules and how they can be rearranged to make different molecules, remembering to keep four bonds to each carbon each time. Let's take a closer look at some of the more common groups or types of organic molecules that make up the backbone for more complex molecules. 
The first group of organic molecules we will look at are simple hydrocarbons. A hydrocarbon is a compound based on hydrogen and carbon. All of the molecules in this family are made up of chains of carbon. What special structural features do all these molecules have in common? Notice, each of these chains of carbon contains only single bonds between the carbon atoms. Organic molecules with the same structural features are called a homologous series. The homologous series of molecules with only single bonds between carbon atoms is called alkanes. Can you see any similarities between the word alkane and the names of the molecules in the picture? Look carefully. We have methane, ethane, propane, butane, pentane, hexane, heptanes, and octane. That's right. Alkanes all end in the letters A-N-E. This way, I know that if a molecule's name ends in ane, that the carbon atoms in the molecule are bonded with single covalent bonds. Throughout organic chemistry, you will see this relationship between the structure of the molecules and their names. One of our organic chemists is going to explain this to us. Hi, Philip. Please explain how organic chemists work out the names for the millions of organic molecules. Hello, Amira. It's wonderful to join you today. Yes, it really would be very difficult to give special names to all organic molecules. Lucky for us, a system to name them all was developed. The IUPAC naming system is a way to name any molecule. I'm sure we'll come across it throughout this series. This stands for the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemists. The IUPAC system works like this. In any carbon molecule, we first count the longest continuous carbon chain. This gives us the first part of the name, sometimes called the prefix. One carbon is meth, two carbons is eth, three carbons is prop, and so on. After five carbons, the Greek system of noting numbers takes over. You may recognize this from maths, where a hexagon has six sides. Seven is hept, and eight is oct. Once we have the prefix, we add an ending to the name which describes how the carbon atoms are bonded. Do you remember how the names of the alkanes ended? Of course, they all ended in the letters A, N, and E. Do you think you could draw a molecule of pentane on your own? Can you see? We start off by taking the first part of the name pentane and pent means that our carbon chain is made up of five carbon atoms. We then join them up with single bonds between the carbon atoms because we see that the name ends in A-N-E. Don't forget that we are drawing a hydrocarbon, and that means that carbon needs four bonds. So fill in the remaining bonds around carbon with hydrogen atoms until each carbon has four bonds. There we have it, the structural formula for a molecule of pentane. This system will work every time because the same steps are used to name all organic compounds. I hope you'll use it often. Now that we know what the structures of the molecules look like on paper and what their names are, let's explore a microscopic view of some organic molecules. We'll start with looking at a model of the simplest hydrocarbon, methane. In the methane molecule, a carbon atom is sharing four pairs of electrons with four hydrogen atoms. These are the bonding pairs for four single covalent bonds. But these electron pairs are not shared equally in the molecule. Carbon pulls the electrons closer to it, away from the hydrogen. We say the carbon-hydrogen bond is polar covalent. You may expect the hydrogen atoms to be slightly more positively charged than the carbon atom, which should be slightly more negative. 
But this molecule has a special shape. When you turn it around in any direction, it still looks the same. We say the molecule is symmetrical. The charges are equally distributed around the molecule, and so the overall molecule is nonpolar. Many organic molecules are nonpolar. They do not have one part of the molecule that has a different charge to another part. The nonpolar nature of organic molecules affects the way they behave when interacting with each other. Have a look at another two alkanes, butane and pentane. Butane and pentane both have chains of carbon atoms surrounded by hydrogen atoms. We can also show their structural formulae in three dimensions. Ethane and butane are both symmetrical molecules. When we rotate them, they look the same. These molecules are nonpolar because charge is evenly distributed around the whole molecule. So, how does the nonpolar nature and shape of these molecules affect the way they behave? Let's have a look at two physical properties, the boiling and melting points of the alkanes. Can you see any trends or patterns in this data? I hope you noticed that the melting point and the boiling points of these hydrocarbons are low. A low boiling point tells us that the intermolecular forces are weak. And since we know that the alkanes are nonpolar symmetrical molecules, it makes sense that there will be very small forces of attraction between the molecules. Also notice that there is a change in the melting points and boiling points. Can you describe this trend? We say that as the length and mass of the chain in alkanes increases, both the melting and boiling points increase. This means that the longer and heavier the alkane, the higher these temperatures become. Can you think of a possible reason for this? Remember that to boil or melt, a substance must overcome its intermolecular forces. This requires energy in the form of heat. Remember that nonpolar substances, such as pentane, are held to one another by weak van der Waals forces. These forces increase with a larger surface area and molecular mass. Adding more carbon atoms to the chain increases both the surface area and the molecular mass. This makes it more difficult to pull the molecules apart from one another. This also means that the boiling point and melting points will increase. So, we can conclude that alkanes with more surface area and molecular weight will have a higher boiling point and melting point. Now, here's a task for today. Can you predict which molecule has the higher melting point? Paraffin oil with the formula C11H24 or wax with the formula C22H46? Here's a clue. Think of their physical state when making your prediction. For more information on organic molecules and related topics, please visit our website on www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn.